Hey everyone, today I'm going to do something a little different. I will not be discussing scripture, but rather an ancient book that scripture references. I normally try to stick to only scripture, but I mentioned the book of Enoch in a previous video, so I'd like to offer a brief explanation of it. First, who is Enoch? Well, there is more than one Enoch in the Bible. It's important to distinguish them. There's Enoch son of Jared, and there's Enoch son of Cain. The book and the person we will be discussing is Enoch son of Jared. The family line of Enoch and Noah is as follows. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and then Noah. All of this information can be found in Genesis chapter 5. According to Luke chapter 3, Jesus' family line is from Enoch. When Enoch lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God, and then he was no more, because God took him away. Enoch is also mentioned by the author of Hebrews. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. But most importantly, the writer of Jude quotes the book of Enoch and calls him a prophet. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones, to judge everyone and to convict them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness and of all the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against them. But to be clear, Enoch is not scripture. It is not infallible, just as it's just an ancient document that it is as old as the Bible and verifies the credibility of the Bible. Not that we need to verify the credibility of the Bible. The Bible is a collection of books over a large expanse of time from many different authors that verifies itself. It is not a singular book, it's, uh, it's several books by several authors over a long period of time. But the Book of Enoch is a useful tool for apologetics because it's a non-biblical book that verifies the Bible. Some people freak out and, and claim conspiracy theories such as Catholics removing Enoch from the Bible. This is not true. Enoch was never part of the Hebrew Bible. The original Hebrew Bible never contained the book of Enoch, even though it was written well before the Hebrew Bible. With all that in mind, I will give you a brief overview of what the book of Enoch discusses. There's a prophecy about Jesus, also good for apologetics and confirming the validity of the Bible. Angels came to earth, taught them things like smithing, enchantments, root cuttings, astrology, etc. Mated with women who formed giants or Nephilim, as mentioned in the Bible. The angels sinned against animals, unknown what this means, possibly chimeras, like they're trying to make in China. Righteous angels complained to God about things going on. A strange baby was born to Lamech, a shiny like a child of the angels. Lamech is freaking out about it as though he's afraid it's a Nephilim or something. Lamech asks Enoch about it. Enoch basically tells him to calm down and that God has a plan for the baby, who is named Noah. God reveals to Noah what's coming later on in his life. God commands the angels to throw evil angels into the pit. Giants slay each other. Angels are bound. Promise of righteous people to escape wrath. Promise of heaven. Enoch hidden in heaven. Enoch confronted Azazel, one of the fallen angels, seems to be the leader of them. Angels beg Enoch to help them. They ask Enoch to ask God to forgive them. Revealed to Enoch that their request was denied by God. Giants killing each other is God's wrath. Vision of heaven, fiery cherubim. No angel could behold the face of God. God rebukes the angels, the fallen ones. They ought to intercede for men and not men for them. You are formally spiritual. Giants shall be called evil spirits. Evil spirits shall come from their bodies. On the earth shall be their dwelling. Their spirits rise up against humans since they came from them. Angels revealed mysteries to humans they weren't supposed to know. Enoch describes various locations, including where angels are judged. 
Females that slept with angels become sirens. Gabriel in charge of seraphim and cherubim. Enoch describes pit where dead souls go. Abel making his case against Cain from the pit. Separation from evil and righteous spirits in the pit. Prophecy of Jesus describing his throne in paradise. Tree of knowledge in paradise. Various animals seen. Device sends water to the earth. Portal stars pass through. Stars are sometimes metaphors for angels in the Bible. It is unclear to me if that's the case here. Better to give wisdom to the pre-flood people, Enoch said, but it will be for others as well. Enoch admi admiring paradise. Orbits described. Enoch sees Jesus. Prophecy of the Medes. Fallen angels taught abortion. More prophecy of Jesus. Sun going through portals. Huge portion describing courses of celestial bodies. This part was very confusing to me, I'm not going to lie. Methuselah authors some of the Book of Enoch. It's unclear if he wrote all of it. Prophecy of Noah and the Flood. Different races of humans on the Ark. Detailed prophecy of Moses. Prophecy of Old Testament stories. Prophecy of prophets. Heaven prophecy. Tribulation prophecy. Millennium, millennium prophecy. New heaven and new earth, eternal life. Men dressing like woman, woman barren by choice, abandoning of children, widespread Bible translation prophesied. That is a brief summation of the book of the book of Enoch, or the books of Enoch. There's obviously a lot more contained in the book, so it would take you a few hours to read through it. But I've tried to give a summary of the highlights. Before I go, I'd like to caution you not to delve too deep researching angels and demons. It's obvious why researching demons is not a good idea, but even obsessing over angels is a bad idea. You should focus on the Godhead and worship him only. Do not worship any other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Further, in Revelation, an angel rebukes John when he bows before it. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things, and when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, But he said to me, Do not do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all those who keep the words of the scroll. Worship God. Not only that, but we are, told, we are told that we will judge the angels, and the book of Hebrews starts off emphasizing that Christ is superior to the angels. This was necessary because humans have a bad habit of obsessing over and even worshiping angels. They are very fascinating to be sure, but your time is better spent studying the word. So that's all I got for you today, guys. I hope it was, I hope it was interesting, and I'll see you in the next video.